ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਛੋਟੀ ਸੀ ਇੱਥੇ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਆਈ ਕੇਮ ਇਨ 66 ਹੈ ਨਾ ਇੱਥੇ ਆਇਆ ਤਾਂ ਬੀਸੀ ਚ ਨਹੀਂ ਮੈਂ ਆਇਆ ਮੈਂ ਸੀ ਕੰਟੇਰੀਓ ਚ ਨਾ ਵਾਟਰ ਨੂੰ ਚ ਬਟ ਦੈਨ ਮਾਈ ਸਿਸਟਰ ਵਾਸ ਲਿਵਿੰਗ ਹੇਅਰ ਦੇ ਸਟਿਲ ਲਿਵਿੰਗ ਹੇਅਰ ਤਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਸਪਾਂਸਰ ਵੀ ਐਕਚੁਅਲੀ ਕੀਤਾ ਸੀਗਾ ਤਾਂ ਮੈਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਮਿਲਣ ਆਇਆ ਤਾਂ ਦੈਟਸ ਇੰਟਰਸਟਿੰਗ ਸਟੋਰੀ ਜਦੋਂ ਮੈਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਘਰ ਠਹਿਰਿਆ ਤੇ ਕੁਝ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਰੈਲੇਟਿਵ ਸੀਗੇ ਕਜ਼ਨਸ ਜਾਂ ਹੋਰ ਤੇ ਦੇ ਜਸਟ ਟੁਕ ਮੀ ਐਸ ਯੂ نو ਸਮਬਡੀ ਕਮਸ ਫਰਮ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਲਾਈਕ ਐਨੀਬਾਡੀ ਮਾਈ ਐਜੂਕੇਸ਼ਨ ਵਾਸ ਨੋ ਕਨਸਿਡਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਆਈ ਵਾਸ ਇੰਡੀਅਨ ਸੋ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਸੋ ਦੇ ਸੁਜੈਸਟਡ ਮੀ ਦੇ ਸ਼ੋਡ ਮੀ ਸਾਮ ਵੈਲ ਦੈਟ ਯੂ ਵੁਡ ਬੀ ਵਰਕਿੰਗ ਹੇਅਰ ਹਾਊ ਥਿੰਗਸ ਗੋ ਹੇਅਰ ਦੇ ਇਵਨ ਬਰਾਟ ਸਮ ਬੂਟਸ ਫਾਰ ਮੀ ਦਿਸ ਆਈ ਟ੍ਰਾਈ ਟੂ ਟੈਲ ਥੈਮ ਦੈਟ ਆਈ ਵੋਂਟ ਬੀ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਬਲੀ ਵਰਕਿੰਗ ਹੇਅਰ ਬਟ ਦੇ ਲਾਫਟ ਐਟ ਮੀ ਐਂਡ ਦੇ ਸੈਡ ਨੋ ਆਫ ਨੋ ਮੈਟਰ ਹਾਊ ਮਚ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਐਜੂਕੇਟਡ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਯੂ ਅਵਰ ਪੀਪਲ ਹੈਵ ਟੂ ਵਰਕ ਵਿਦ ਵਾਸ ਰਾਈਟ ਆਲਸੋ ਟੂ ਸਮ ਐਕਸਟੈਂਟ ਬਟ ਦੈਨ ਮਾਈ ਫਰੈਂਡ ਕਾਲਡ ਹੀ ਸੈਡ ਜਸਟ ਕਮ ਬੈਕ ਸੋ ਆਈ ਜਸਟ went back after a week or 10 days and then joined the university there in masters and got some loan from unist um, bank of montreal as i already mentioned so so i didn't live in bc that long but after two and a half years no after a year and a half i came back to victoria in bc of course you are right and the society here the punjabi society was quite different very different actually at that time so they have developed they had developed their own vocabulary punjabi vocabulary which was modified from english words so they would say funeral funeral they were mostly um illiterate people uh, very rudimentary education if at all but mostly they worked in forest forestry or um, sawmills things like that maybe fishery also but mostly sawmills and so uh, lunch kit have you heard about that so lunch kit kit they thought is a cat so they they started calling lunch kit billy so jadon kam te jande si ge ek kar te apni wife nu ne kehna meri billy ready kar de so <laughs> so grand is you know what grand is you know grand person grand. they modified it to grady so bada grady banda bhi so then they would develop the verb grad kadta ha na bada so the that's how the language had changed uh, i forgot uh, a special name for this language actually before i wrote a uh, uh, rather lengthy essay uh, punjabi outside india so i uh, wrote quite in detail about this language uh, how they interacted with the white workers our people how they interacted with the cis mexican or others very interesting that essay was i wrote it for uh, there is going to going on a survey of indian languages in india it is going to be in 50 volumes huge study in english it was done by some white scholars uh, before when india was under british and now they are redoing it so they contacted me for punjabi outside india very few people would be in education educational jobs or other uh, management jobs or professional jobs so like i was in i when i came here i started working in university victoria computer center so they you know i had kind of a different kind of if i call status or whatever and there are a few other people too working with the gov for government there was a planner but 
majority by far the majority were workers and they uh, had a great contribution in the development of British Columbia. They um, worked in difficult jobs in forestry. They took down the forests, you know. Well, now, of course, we see it a different way and from an environment point of view. But there, at that time, environment wasn't in the forefront at all, actually. So, in forestry, they did so much work, physical work, and it's acknowledged by the province their work. Same way in mills, they worked a whole lot, overtime work and with lesser pays. So I think they um, culturally they couldn't mix up with the people here our women, like they would change the names, uh, Peter or whatever uh, from original names. Women would try to dress in skirts, but not exact skirts people, women wore hair, but somehow similar. So they were kind of, they did look sometimes funny um, dresses. But it was difficult time for them here to adjust. And there was a lot of racism at that time. There's no comparison now. Now, so um, it's multiculturalism came later after that. And um, it mostly changed with the Trudeau, senior Trudeau, not this Trudeau. Well, this is as good as I think father, but um, his father was very progressive, kind of left-leaning person and he did you know, a lot to steer Canada from its traditional racist kind of trajectory. So anyway, but before that, uh, I'm not sure if you know, um, there was a defense committee in our community, the young men, they just banded together and um, Hardial Bans was their leader. They were, I think, influenced by Naxalite movement in India. So they uh, started uh, helping people who would be victims of racism. They would go to the house and fight with the racists. They would challenge the racists, the young people. So that made a lot of a difference. Um, although my first play is, we also took a part in anti-racist rallies and write, wrote about it. And um, but uh, the, my first play, <coughs> Duja Passa, is on racism uh, here. Duja Passa means the other side, like. People from there, from India, other from the world, say a bright side of Canada only, great work. So there's also other side, which means racism in Canada. So anyway, that's the book, right? So this uh, this is the first Canadian Punjabi play written here. So the other people came from Punjab and. They did plays here, but this was the first one written here. It's on racism. And I explore the theme is, um, the theme was uh, a, a, a Punjabi man is in, uh, what is the word did you call? Dubida um, Punjabi chicken there. It's a very common word in English. That's why I wrote these things because I forget these words. Um, he was in a fix whether to keep the turban or not. So, onu bar gali which some white kids challenged him. Modi pagnu lata lande just just pure racism, and they used to call Punjabis all Punjabis pakis from Pakistan, Paki, 
or Punjab. Punjab was a derogatory term. Hey Punjab. So it took it. so he comes back to his house and is very upset and he can't decide whether I should continue uh, having the turban or not. And Feroda Munda Haga, oh Aap clean shaven oh the brother. So there's a fiercely argue and discuss what should be done. So at the end, while they are still discussing, like the boys, his son was of the opinion that I don't have a turban, but everybody should have the right to wear a turban. If he wants to wear a turban, it's his right. They were like a brother, a bande, the Okanda Ganga Gay, Ganga Ram, Jamuna Gay, Jamuna Ram. So do as Romans do if you are a Roman. So is there, but he slips to um, the washroom, the man. They offer lal pag ban ke the bar danda just to accept the challenge that I am not going to be subdued. I am going to wear the turban. So that's the play. Uh, this one. It was 1981 when I wrote it. And after that, I wrote several plays, and then other people also started to write. It was done some in some other hall by uh, Punjabi Literary Association. Onna ne kipta sega. Sadhu was involved, and Sukhwant I think was in, but Sadhu handled the. Um, I don't know what he handled. Probably camera or something. And um, so that was it was Sex Smith School. Pehli was Sex Smith School Vancouver which kita gaya. Watanu Dur Art Foundation wallo. Sorry, I cracked it. Yeah, that's again it's a poor <laughs> Uh, book with a poor binding because it's now old and it hasn't been republished. It has been revised four times. It's a fourth version. Uh, I think it was taught in UBC also. And uh, so this is the first uh, full length Canadian play, Kamaga Tamaru. And you know the story, right? So I was, strangely, I wasn't that much inspired by the racism that happened. I was really impressed um, by the shore committee, how they uh, reacted to Kamaga Tamaru. And it was amazing for me that uh, our people could be so humanistic, uh, so considerate. They didn't have to, but they went all the way to support people on the on Kamangatamaru. They risked their lives. Even the Hassan Rahim, people like Hassan Rahim, they tried to hire they hired a boat and tried to um, sail through very rough waters to reach Kamangatamaru before it docked at Vancouver, just to tell that go to the north and you will it will be easy to um, get down, I mean, get uh, uh, disembarked there, but here it will be difficult, difficult. So at night, two of them hired a boat, very rough sea, but they had to abandon their uh, journey because it was too dangerous, but you can see how dedicated they were. So that's what inspired me to write actually, the, the play. I think it was um, because it's not only one instance of it lays the foundation, it inspires young people in the community, in the community. It sends out a great impression that these people are not just selfish or living alone. They can help, they can reach out to people in difficulty. So that's what uh, really impressed me and I thought of writing.
in the play. When we first did, the staging itself wasn't very successful because it was a full length play. We had no, um, I directed it and we had no um, experience. But the ma main difficulty was the sound. We didn't know. Here uh, in Canada, the audience is very quiet, very well behaved. They wouldn't, there wouldn't be a slight sound from the audience. Our audience is totally different. Uh, they hadn't learned and now it's a bit different. But at that time they just took children with them. <laughs> and they were talking to each other and so the sound or voices of the actors didn't go beyond half the hall. So that was the difficulty. But you can say at that time people were so, so enthusiastic about 500 of them came. And then I got a message from a minister, from BC minister uh, congratulating and wishing the well. So it, it did create a kind of stir at that time, yeah. And then it was done later several times. And I think it's the most cited play in Canadian literature. Because it has been cited uh, everywhere, not only in Canada. Um, because the Kamagata Maru, at that time I didn't realize at all that it would be so important, the incident. So the play automatically, there was one more play written before it by a white writer. You know, journal artist, he and I wrote this book. This is A Journey with the Endless Eye, Stories of the Kamagata Maru Incident. So he made original paintings, very beautiful paintings in it. And I wrote the little stories about Kamagata Maru. So this, this book was released the day Trudeau um, apologized in Parliament. The same day this book was released in the University of Ottawa by the president, the university president, to match with the apology that it's not only political, even in literature and education, there's something is going, going on. So anyway, this book was released there. Publisher um, is an English, um, it's a Victoria publisher, Richard Olfson, a friend of mine actually. So he published a whole lot. These paintings were, were displayed in the University of Ottawa uh, very beautifully. They did a great job. And I think uh, then there, uh, they were bought for $10,000 or something. <clears throat> so it's quite important book. This is another um, uh, Nautic, I mean play. It's a Niralaj, shameless. This is on um, uh, domestic violence against women because um, about tw 20 years ago here, <clears throat> 25 or 20 years ago, there were three main movements in our community here. One was anti-racism and women's movement and farmer workers union. So we were very active and all three. So this was inspired by that movement, Nirlaj. For a year at least, we were very active. Um, we even went to different houses where was, there was a problem and tried to talk to the men, which was sometimes looked dangerous too. But we did the play. We had the meetings, lots of gathering meetings. We had demonstrations, stuff like that, um, Main Street and so all sorts of activities. And my, um, there's another play, um, Ek Kudi Ek Supna, that's also on the same, uh, on women's issue.
it was always a good audience good comments no complaint and nobody became aggressive to us or there, there were many people who weren't happy about it of course you would understand that you know but uh, nobody kind of dared to come and challenge that we won't let you do this play again or this and that it's nothing like that happened rebirth of gandhi that was in english first english play and uh, hall was full at least in more than 50% were white audience it was uh, intended on uh, dalit issue so gandhi had made a statement that <clears throat> very famous statement that i don't want to come back to this earth but if i if i do if i have to i would prefer being born in a dalit womb so that i can understand their experience experience so that i can experience their um what you call pain and suffering and work for it so what happens in the play gandhi was shot as you know so the first scene happens up uh, he is confront when gandhi was shot he went up i know <laughs> we don't know where it was but is confronted by a god yamdoot the god of death you know there's a god of death and yamdoot is their agents yamdoots so smaller gods so the myth is uh, prevalent myth in villages in india that when somebody dies two yamdoots come and take it to the god of death take it and they have all the accounts of his life he did good or bad whatever so when gandhi goes up and uh, confronts um yamdoot sitting there he already knows because he had taken it there this is not shown in the play but he says uh, hello mr gandhi and he is of course surprised anyway then they tell and um, gandhi um he gandhi in the first scene gandhi asks so where are you going to send me to hell or heaven or you know the on the left was hell and the right was heaven where yamdoot was sitting like that he says let me see and then he says you go back to earth and gandhi is upset he says why go back to earth i have come to see the lord and then he says you made a statement that if you are reborn <laughs> that you will be now a uh, dalit womb is ex- waiting for you so you have to go so that's how the play goes and so gandhi comes back and then he faces he then experiences what a caste system is when he comes back like that so that was a play it was fun also funny also yamdoot and gandhi their dialogues and this and that